What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Um, since Ivy League Decisions came out just recently, um, I thought it'd be a good idea to give you know a little tour of what uh, UPenn's campus looks like. Although I wish I could go into the different buildings and show what the inside looks like, um, due to COVID restrictions, they have a lot of like uh, limited access and uh, restrictions into buildings, so that'll have to be a video for another time. However, I think it's still a good idea to give a little spatial demonstration. You know, you can picture what the campus looks like uh, with this little tour. Before I get started, I just want to congratulate everyone in the class of 2021. No matter what school you got into, I'm telling you right now that finishing high school is such an accomplishment. I know that some of you may be disappointed that you didn't get into your dream school, but I'm here to tell you that it's 100% okay. I know it's super cliche to say this, but like, it's legit. Like, 9 times out of 10, where you go for your undergraduate does not matter at all. What matters more, I think, is the effort you put into your studying and your learning in college, and also the opportunities that you can take advantage of while you're at college. I mean, people end up being successful from all types of colleges, and not every single college is the right fit for everyone. So, no matter your college decisions, I want you to be proud of yourself and your achievements, and I want you to be excited for the future. Alright, enough of this savvy talk. Let's go get on this tour. On the far right upper corner of campus, here we have Lauder College House and Hill College House. Lauder College House, which was previously known as New College House, is one of the on-campus housing options here at Penn. Um, Lauder is considered one of the, the four-year communities, so students can opt to live here for all four years if they'd like. The rooms inside Lauder are suite style, so um, all rooms come with a living room and one or two bathrooms, and each suite can have between two to six people. Uh, there's also a dining hall option right inside, so it's super convenient to live here, and uh, there's a lot of green space too, so I live here and I think it's pretty dope. Hill is another one of the on-campus housing options at Penn. The dorms here are for freshmen only, and uh, also one of the main dining hall options is located inside Hill. The mail room is also here if you ever need to pick up packages. Just across the street from Hill and Lauder is the engineering quad. Um, a lot of engineering re related courses can be found here, as well as stuff for labs and research. Um, in general, it's just like a very chill area. There's a lot of benches and green space that you can hang out at. Uh, another one of the la main landmarks here at Penn is Locust Walk, the walkway that stretches through most of campus. And even though there's a reduced number of students in person right now, there's still always a lot of people walking on Locust Walk. There's plenty of green space, and as the days get warmer, you'll definitely find people out and about doing either homework or just playing games of spike ball. Along Locust, you can find many buildings like lecture halls and even Greek life housing. Specifically, you can see the John M. Huntsman Hall, which houses the Huntsman program, and you can also see the Jerome Fisher program building, which is for the dual degree program for management and technology. At one point, Locust even becomes a bridge that crosses one of the streets, and it takes you onto the west side of campus. Fun fact, on Locust, there is an infamous compass that you're not supposed to walk on, or else you're destined to fail your midterm. And you can find Ben Franklin chill on Locust Walk, too. Along Locust Walk is the College Green, which, as the name would suggest, it's a place with a lot of greenery. It's a really popular spot just to chill and enjoy the sun. Surrounding the College Green are a lot of buildings like the Fisher Fine Arts Library. It's very distinctive with its red color and it's a really good place to go if you ever need to study or check out a book. There is also the Button, which is sitting right in front of the Van Pelt Library. The Van Pelt Library is a really good study space, but there are a lot of really weird traditions associated with this button over here. Alright, next we have College Hall, which is also in this area. It houses some of the undergraduate admission uh, spaces, and it also has a lot of other facilities in there. And of course you can't forget the infamous Love Statue, that is a must-go destination for visitors. Everyone loves to take photos over here. Mm -hmm. 
And right behind the College Green and College Hall is the Perelman Quadrangle, which is largely just a space to chill at. There's also that really big Penn Common sign, which is a popular spot to take photos. And then next to the Perelman Quadrangle is Houston Hall, which has Houston Market inside of it. Houston Market is one of the dining hall options here at Penn, and they're known to have slightly more palatable food compared to the other dining hall options. The class of 1920 Commons, or uh, what we just call 1920s here, is another one of the big dining halls. Uh, nothing too crazy. There is an Amazon locker inside of it, which is super convenient to pick up your packages. And there's also a Starbucks right downstairs where you can use your dining dollars. Across from the 1920s Commons is the Kelly Writers House, which often hosts events related to creative works and creative writing. If you walk along Locust just a little past the 1920s Commons, you will see these massive red poles. There's really no reason for why they're there other than for art purposes, but it is a good landmark if you're trying to meet up with people. Just tell your friend, let's meet by the tampons. Around the tampons is a bunch of different dorms and college house options. There are three buildings that are known as the high rises. I'm pretty sure that's because they go up to like 20 floors or something like that. There's Harnwell, Harrison, and Roden. In terms of rooms and floor plans, there isn't many of substantial differences between the three though. Also by the high rises, Du Bois is another one of the four-year communities that specifically embraces African American culture. It is the smallest college house, but the rooms are sweet style and the community is tight knit. Next, we have one part of the Stouffer College House, specifically Mayor Hall. Most of these rooms are sweet style in Mayor Hall, but uh, Stouffer in general is known to be one of the quieter college houses. Like Stouffer, Gregory is a college housing option that has two buildings. This here is Gregory Van Pelt. I also think Gregory is one of the quieter college houses, but fortunately it is under renovation this year and it should have AC by the next year. Here is New College House West, the newest college house. It has not officially opened yet and it is still under construction, but it's slated to open this fall. It has suite style rooms and I'm assuming that it would have newer facilities although I am salty because I didn't get it when I requested it. Once you reach 40th Street, that is basically the end of Locust Walk. Um, around this area are a lot of restaurants, um, more importantly, Acme, which is a grocery store chain here. The Radian is also in this area and it's a popular off-campus housing option. Oh yeah, and you can't forget McDonald's. Here is the last and most iconic college house, uh, the Quad. The Quad is made up of three different college houses which are listed here. The Quad is for freshmen only and many believe it is part of the quintessential freshman experience. The social scene here is great, um, however there have been a lot of complaints about pests and mold. Tucked away in the corner of campus, behind the quad, is Fagan Hall, which is where a lot of school of nursing resources are located. In this area, there is also a lot of pen medicine related buildings and also the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania and the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Lastly, there is the Lady Labs and the Bio Pond area, which is where a lot of biology related stuff happens. Nothing too notable, but I thought it'd be cool to include the biopond since it's a nice place to hang out too. Alright, I'm filming this way later, which explains why it's super dark outside. 
But I um, just want to say hopefully that this video helps you picture what kind of Penn's campus looks like. Thanks for watching and you Penn's class of 2025. I'm excited to see you here in the fall. Go Quakers!